Joining me in the studio now, Talk TV's Royal Editor Sarah Hewson and the Times Special Correspondent Josh Glancy. Good to have you both here. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming in. Why don't we start with Josh, give you a chance to take a punt at this story, this, this near catastrophic story. Always quite difficult to work out whether a catastrophe would or would not have happened, isn't it, when it hasn't happened? Yeah, I mean, it's all a bit... It's in some ways a classic Sussex story and that it seems to have been quite emotionally led and now the facts aren't entirely stacking up, it seems. I mean, my initial shock was just that anyone would spend two hours trying to get anywhere in central New York because you know, yeah. it's totally gridlocked all the time. But, no, I mean, it does seem like it doesn't entirely add up and that perhaps... Um, I don't know, but perhaps they, they, they were responding very emotionally to what, what is obviously a very emotive subject for mm -hmm. Harry, given, given everything we know about Except Diana. Except, of course, a chase isn't inevitable. If you refuse to be chased, then the chaser can't chase you. So if you sit still, the whole, you know, the heat is taken out, the danger is taken out, and so is the emotion. Right, and one, one does wonder that <coughs> they do have their picture taken a lot, so it might not be the end of the world to have it taken again. But, again, this is a very emotive issue for him. He, he doesn't like the tabloid press, he doesn't like the paparazzi, we obviously know why. Uh, and I think he presumably felt like he wasn't happy to just sit there and let them have their way. On the other hand, they'd had their way, as we can all see. And when mm. you've just made a very public appearance at an incredibly public place and been roundly filmed, photographed, snapped, papped and every other thing, it does seem a bit peculiar to be so obsessed with not having a picture taken when you go out, especially as he was with his wife and his mother-in-law. If he was with a concubine, a catamite, <laughs> a whole load of, you know, illegal drugs, a lot of arms that he was secretly dealing, then you totally get it. Of course, you don't want to be photographed. But if you're with your mother-in-law and your wife and you've already been photographed all evening why on earth just not co cooperate well i suppose it's that sense of, of being photographed when you don't want to be photographed by paparazzi is probably the central fact of harry's life in a way it's defined his whole existence and so he obviously cares about it much more than you or i would and and so responded differently i suppose on the other hand sarah people will say if you don't want to be photographed don't appear as megan did in a figure hugging gold dress with a fleshly cut out in the front don't accept an award at a vast public ceremony, just don't do any of those things. Stay there in that lovely hen house that we've seen so amply covered on so many different occasions. Stay and do a collage with Archie and Lilibet. Go and have dinner with your mother, but don't don't appear at the Visionary Woman of the Year Award or whatever it is, and, and you know, lap up the limelight in that way. I think it's, it's about controlling the narrative and controlling access. They would say that, well, we... We posed, we had our photographs taken at the awards gala and then we wanted to go home and do our own thing. This is part of the reason they left the United Kingdom. They wanted to have greater control. They wanted to escape uh, media harassment, as they describe it, and media intrusion. But they are finding it, it's not that straightforward. They... Earlier this week, uh, uh, an alleged stalker was arrested outside their home in Montecito. They get drones uh, flying overhead, trying to take photographs of them. They, they've seen what it is like in New York to be followed by paparazzi. But I think your point about uh, trying to evade them probably made this far worse because they were so adamant they didn't want to have their pictures taken uh, when they were travelling to their friend's apartment on the Upper East Side that we then ended up with this two-hour scenario mm -hmm. unfolding. I mean, if you're to look at this from their perspective, as Josh described, Harry does have a huge issue, and we can understand why, with the paparazzi and that what he describes as a trigger, seeing the flashbulbs going off mm -hmm. and the sounds of those cameras. And he has said, and I think the Times quoting today, that he spoke to a friend and said this is the closest he's come to understanding what happened to his mother in the tunnel in 1997 but um, it perhaps didn't need to be quite this dramatic. And I think when they talk about near catastrophic, near is doing quite a lot of heavy lifting in yes. that sentence. Josh, we, we're used to this phrase by now, control the narrative. Mm. I wouldn't have been allowed to use that in an essay at Haberdash's Vintage 1973 under any circumstances, but nevertheless, we've become inured to the phrase. Um, but is anyone delusional if they think they can actually do it? How do you control your own narrative? It's not possible. It's not worthy to even attempt. It's not worth your, your, your time or effort, is it? Well, they've had some success, certainly in the US, possibly less so here, where I think we're a bit more cynical. They've had some success at putting their narrative out there. I think controlling it might be a bit <laughs> ambitious. But if you think about the Oprah interview, you think about Spare, the memoir, the Harry and Meghan documentary. I mean, these are all threads in a narrative that they have put out into the world that many people in America 
who perhaps le have less grounding in the royal story or the royal mm -hmm. saga have bought into that. So th there is a narrative out there in the world that they've they've. Pushed, Although pushed we're forward. hearing that the, 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 the Americans are less enchanted, less seduced, less beguiled by this because they're beginning to think it's a one note story and they've heard mm. the note already and it's very plangent and it's very plaintive. It's, it, it, you know, redolent of victimhood. And it's beginning to get on people's nerves, especially in a worldwide cost of living crisis. I think people are just less drawn to it now, aren't they? Yeah, I think, it, I think that's true. And I think I was fascinated to see polling in the aftermath of the memoir Spare, which showed their popularity ratings plummeted here, which is no surprise, but plummeted in the US too. And they were much more popular in the US. I think from my experience with Americans, they quite liked Harry and Meghan at first, um, but I think people find the idea of attacking your family in public like mm -hmm. that re reprehensible, I'm generalizing yes. here, but I think many people felt that that was a, a bridge too far and it has, it has affected the popularity. And you're right, you know, it is a, it, it is a bit of a one note story with Harry sometimes, and I think they're gonna struggle. I mean, he's on a three book deal, one rather wonders what book two, maybe it'll be about the paparazzi and Gosh, the tabloid Sarah, press. another book, for goodness sake, two more books, particularly as the ghostwriter seemed to have kind of fallen out of love with the whole process as well and was writing his own, gosh, haven't I suffered, aren't I the victim, kind of account of, of, of writing the spare on Harry's behalf. Two more, good Lord. Yes, I mean, I, I don't know. He did say that he'd left out at least 50% of the material, so he had material for another book. Mm. I mean, I don't know whether that is in the pipeline or whether we'll have some kind of self-help book or whether we'll have Megan uh, with a book. Certainly, Megan is relaunching herself and her brand. They've got new agents uh, now, and Megan perhaps trying to do things on her own as well. This uh, award that she was receiving uh, on Tuesday night in New York, um, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of Megan. She's been very quiet. Well, we have a couple of callers, so I'd like to uh, hear your response, Josh and Sarah, to what they have to say. Let's hear first from Shirley from Birmingham. Hi, Shirley. Thanks for ringing. Good afternoon. Um, good afternoon. I do think you're being um, unfair, and, not, uh, and to, the first word that comes to mind is spiteful to Harry and Megan. The taxi driver picked them up at the end, and ITV said, we have footage of them being chased, but we're not showing it. We'll show it. And I, and I do think that the cameras should come forward of them being chased. There were six cars behind them. There were the police near miss. There were cars going the wrong way and passers-by were near miss. So they're not making it up. They did have a bad time. And, and I do think that the paparazzi are too... Um, there's no boundaries. It... Uh, Josh? I think that's a reasonable point. I mean, I, I think with this story, it's important not to jump to conclusions because we heard their initial statement. There have been some qualifications from various witnesses. Clearly, you're right, Shirley, that something uh, un unfair happened to them or something unpleasant happened to them. Was it near catastrophic? I don't know, I mean, that's almost a semantic debate, I suppose, in a way. Um, so, but I think we have to keep an open mind. We have to hold, I think, probably competing truths in our heads at once on this, which is that this was probably not a very pleasant experience. It was probably a lot worse for Harry, given his emotional context, but perhaps there is a danger that it was slightly uh, exaggerated too, although we'll see as more reporting comes out. Yeah, Shirley, I'll just read the NYPD statement, which is uh, uh, on Wednesday evening, the NYPD assisted the private security team protecting the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. There were numerous photographers that made their transport challenging. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex arrived at their destination and there were no reported collisions, summonses, injuries or arrests in that regard. Let's talk briefly to Shane in Edinburgh. Shane, if you can make it nice and brief, that'd be great. Good afternoon, sweetheart. He's a regular 25. caller. Nice I've to hear waiting. from you, my love. And you, Vanessa. I've been waiting 25 minutes. I was hoping to have a bit longer. But anyway, <laughs> what, the point I would... Listen, we're all hoping like, to have a bit longer, my darling. You've got to get what you're given in this business, I'm afraid. The point I'm trying, I'd like to make is I don't have a great deal of time for those two. Uh, I think they're tortured souls. I think they need help, the pair of them, with a variety of issues. I'm not in the least bit sympathetic to them. I think these embellishments that we've heard, where the, the semantics, as your commentator said, near catastrophic and all 
the rest of it is nothing but convenient. There's a judicial review in the High Court at the moment where Prince Harry seeks to review the practices of the Metropolitan Police in relation to his own security and what he thinks he ought to get and what arrangements he thinks should be made in this country. I think this just plays into more of the narrative that those two have written, not controlled. They've written it. It's their narrative. And some people buy it. I'm afraid I don't. Shane, thank you very much.